In a recent video, I showed off the Down for Sound JP93, which is our largest amplifier currently available, but they do have other models that were also released, including the JP53 we see here, which is their 5300 watt at one ohm amplifier. Also, they released the JP73. This one's rated 7300 watts at one ohm. Now, these all come with the same owner's manual, so I'm actually gonna show you the video here from the JP93. You may notice everything looks the same here. We'll get to the specs of each amp here shortly. Each amp comes with three different hex keys and an adjustment screw driver that is for modifying the voltage on the amp for the bass knob. USB-C to USB-A cable there that is for powering the bass knob. And here it is, this is a Bluetooth bass knob connects to the amp via Bluetooth but it still does need to be powered, it does not have a built-in battery or anything, so you do have to provide it power from a USB port to USB-C, or straight USB-C if you have one of those in your car. But yeah, these are the Mac Daddy remotes here, and they've changed them so that only one rotation goes from zero to 100, so that's nice. Here's the size difference in the amps you can see, and on the website, the JP53, there's actually nine different colors your choice, $874.99 is the price I'm showing right now. Check links in the video description for the updated price. The JP73 comes in at $1249.99 as the time of this video, and there's seven different colors. I'm not sure why they decided to go with seven versus nine. Anyway, I digress. As far as dimensions go, 9.4 inches width, 2.7 inches height on both amps, length 19.5 inches for the 53, and 24 inches for the 73. Let's take a look at one end of the amplifier. First off, you can see this little hole at the top left. This is the Bluetooth voltage adjustment for the remote base knob that is Bluetooth controlled. Again, it does have to be powered by the USB, but that allows you to adjust your voltage to match your system. We also have power protect clip LED indicators here. We have Tiffany style RCAs, the very fat ones, very nice quality. We also have the input gain control, 0.2 volts to six volts. We have a subsonic adjustment from 10 hertz up to 50 hertz, low pass filter, 250 hertz down to 30 hertz. This is 12 dB per octave. Then we also have a phase control from zero to 180 degrees. Now we don't talk a lot about phase control and what it does. In order to set it properly, my suggestion would be have a friend adjust the phase control when you're paying a 40 hertz tone from your seat in the car and just see which sounds best. If your subs are facing up or facing back, it may need to be adjusted some, so just play with it and see what sounds the best. This amp also includes bass boost variable frequency as well as boost up to 9 dB. And we have adjustments here for the subsonic low pass and bass frequency all using clicky potentiometers. Now these clicky potentiometers are not for the gain control, which is kind of odd because a lot of times SPL competitors have to use hot glue to keep the gains from adjusting on themselves. Both the 53 and the 73 are half bridge amps, so they are strappable with another exact model. And also we have four gauge for the speaker outputs. There are two of them, even though it's a mono block amplifier. They are linked together internally though, so you don't have to use both unless you just need to. Here on the opposite end, we have massive 1.0 inputs. We have three it is important to hook up all three of these with 1.0 wire, and in some cases you might want to use dual inputs. We also have 12 volt remote from the head unit to turn on the amp. As far as ratings go, the JP53 is 2100 watts at 4 ohms, 4100 at 2 ohms, or 5300 at 1 ohm, with a fuse rating of 600 amps. JP73, 3300 at 4 ohms, 5600 at 2 ohms, 7300 at 1 ohm, with a fuse rating of 800 amps. As I mentioned in the JP93 video before, I have a massive setup of LTO lithium cells, actually 320 amp hours worth. That's 48 cells running in 8P6S format. We also have 400 amps worth of power supply as well to power all these amplifiers to their potential. Now let's fire up the SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. So we can test out the power output of both of these amps. On the left, you'll see the power output in watts. The middle, the ohm load, the right the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote clamp so we can calculate the estimated efficiencies. This here's my favorite part. 
So this is a double feature video. We're gonna be showing the JP53 and the 73. As I mentioned before, both amps have triple 10 inputs, but we did use the input adapters. So we're actually running six 10s per amplifier here. We'll start off with the JP53 at four ohms. It's rated 2100 watts. Let's see what we get here. Voltage is gonna be a little bit higher because we are starting higher using the lithium here. But here you go, 20, oh, jump the end, 3,000. 77 at 14.81. So that's almost a thousand watts over the rated output at 14.4. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, run the 40 Hertz tone. We should get more and we do 33.96, 14.77. Now, if you say the voltage is too high on these tests, then <laughs> you probably don't need to be running an amp this big because most guys are gonna have sufficient electric to be able to run an amp this big. Dynamically, it's in the pulse track, 3294, 14.82. There you go, triple inputs again here for the JP73 running the dual adapters, running six runs of power, six runs of ground. At four ohms, the JP73 is rated 3300 watts at 14.4. Let's see what we get here, certified to 1% distortion. We get 3883, 14.91. Again, voltage is pretty strong here because we are starting a little bit higher here with the lithium bank. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, 40 hertz track. And there you go, 4402, 14.79. Then we'll try the dynamic track here at four ohms. This is our last four ohm test here. And over 4,000 watts. 4,058, is it gonna jump any more? Looks like we're stuck there at 4,058 at 14.76. Now we'll switch to the two ohm run for the JP53. It's rated 4,100 watts at 14.4. Here we go, can we get the 4,100? Yes, we can, 49.10 at 14 and a half volts. So right at 5,000 watts at 14 and a half, certified to 1% distortion. Now uncertified, let's see if we can get over that 5,000. And yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> 5582, right at 14.42. As you guys could see earlier, I do have quite a lithium bank here and I've got about 400 amps of charging. So you can see how the voltage drops here, even with the quite a sufficient system here. 5408 at 14 and a half for the dynamic burst. Now let's try two ohms for the JP73. We're rated 5600 watts at 14.4. And we get that pretty easily. 6561 at 14.68. Now we'll try the uncertified test here for the JP73. Should get quite a bit more than that. And it's counting up. Oh, check that out. 74.45 at 14.6. Again, over 900 watts more than rated. Dynamic at two ohms. And we're pretty much getting the one ohm power at two ohms with this amp. 74.55, 14.87. Now we'll do the one ohm test of each amp. First, the JP53 is rated 5,300 watts. Thus the name JP53. <laughs> Let's try it here, certified 1% distortion and check this out. 8,068 watts at 14.24. Oh man, we gotta stop the presses here and get them to rate this thing right because whoa, talk about underrated. This goes back to the Orion HCCA days, <laughs> 81.45, 14 14.11 up to clipping. So this is literally an 8,000 watt amp that's rated 5,300 watts. That is incredible. 87.02, it keeps jumping. 88.93, 80, oh, over 9,000. 91.21 at 14.35 dynamic burst. This thing has got the juice. What about the JP73 where it's rated 7,300? Let's see if we get that 7,300 easily. Look at this, almost 10,000, 9701, 14.16. If we could keep 14.4, it probably would hit that 10K. 
uncertified to clipping? Are we going to be able to pass the 10K? Oh, man. <laughs> 11,097. Almost 11,100 watts at 14.14. Man, crazy power here. Dynamically, check this out. 12,000, 13,000. <laughs> 13,141, is it going to go anymore? I think it's going to stop there. 13,141 at 14.85. Here are all the results of both tests, including the JP53 and the JP73. Both overperformed their ratings by quite a bit. Again, you have to make sure you provide the amp enough input power because it does take power to make power. And both of these amps show you that you need a lot of lithium or battery power and also a lot of charging to be able to run these now if you want to see the test under one ohm watch until the very end of the video that's for the jp73 but we're going to go ahead and let you see the jp53 first starting off at 0.8 it is not rated for anything under one ohm but these things are very robust and they can handle it here almost 9,000 watts at 0.8 for the jp53 8881. What about uncertified to clipping? Can we bust that 9,000? I think we can. Yes, 9,077 at 14.1. Dynamically here at 0.8. Are we going to bust 10? Yes, we are. 10,327. 10,362. 10,517. 10,622. 10,674. Thank you, Lithium, there for bumping up 14.46. But we're not done yet, my friends. We're dropping it to 0.67. That's right. Let's see what we get here. Certified at almost zero ohms. Right at 9,000. 89.46 at 14.28. We'll reset it here and try it uncertified. This is a crazy test for the amp to be able to run this test and not blow up. Now, 87.73 at clipping, it did actually do a little bit more certified. That's because we're running these tests back to back to back. And the amp pretty much gives up at 1% distortion anyway, so there's not a whole lot more. But here dynamically, over 12,000, 12,086 at 14.4. But we're not done yet. That's right. We're running half an ohm on this amp. We're just doing the dynamic test, not doing the certified test, not doing anything else. But here we go. 14,106 at 14.47. Next up, we're going to look to find out what's inside. Of course, these amplifiers all have acrylic panels on the bottom, so you can pretty much see straight through them. But in order to get rid of the reflection so that we can more easily show you, we'll take off the screws here for these bottom acrylic panels and move them out of the way so we can show you what is inside each amplifier and talk a little bit about it. Here you can see the difference in the size. You can tell that the 73 has two additional power transformers and some more caps as well. On the input side, they're virtually identical. And here again is the additional items there on the bigger amp, which of course you would need. Of course, there is a special saying on each amp here on the JP53, like a bow tie, but better. I'm assuming 5.3, like a Chevy 5.3. <laughs> I guess if I'm wrong, you guys let me know. Here on the JP73, though, it says CK Pot 777. I think the guy in Korea glued over the real saying. Anyway, let's move on to the pros and cons. First up, the amps both perform rated power plus. They have triple 10 inputs and need a beefy electrical system to be able to run these. They are linkable with the same models. Also, they have Nichicon caps on the power supply side, Tiffany RCAs. One of the best Bluetooth remotes I've ever seen. Also, you have plenty of choices for color, whatever you want for your amp. And handle low impedances, we'll find out about the 73 later. Things to be aware of, the Bluetooth remote does need power. There's no internal battery for that. The positive and negatives are not in groups. Make sure you hook it up correctly. Please be aware of the electrical system required. In most cases, it will cost as much as the amplifier. And being made in Korea by one of the top build houses for base head amplifiers. And they also make you know, some of the other big brands that we're not going to say right now. But uh, yeah, so you're getting a lot of power here. You're getting a quality amplifier and your choice here, 53, 73, you've already done the 93. Choose what you want. Check links in the video description. Thanks always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. 
Did you say 40,000 watts? 40,000 at zero ohm. Zero. Now it's not quite zero, but everything under one ohm, I'm going to let it play, let you guys hear the epic music, and just watch the results. <laughs> 